Did you follow the market today? Uh, it was quite odd, wasn't it? Like if you look intraday here, for example, that's um, a company called Unity Software. And um, from the peak down to where it ended, that's a minus 12%. And it was almost down 14% intraday. So um, huge run up in the beginning. And that was, of course, um, because of the CPI data that came out um, today, which was better than expected. And everyone is kind of expecting that the markets would massively rally on this. And they really haven't so much. Um, so it's kind of odd to see, for example, also looking at NEO here, the intraday candle was a little bit smaller, but also, um, yeah, uh, almost 10% of a swing intraday. So um, that's not normal. And um, what it possibly teaches us is to rather look at the the bigger picture and the fundamentals than um, trying to trade those actual movements in the market today because I guess it surprises everyone like the shorts in the beginning like with better than expected data on the CPI um, possibly forcing them out of their positions and then um, the market ultimately you know not buying into it yet possibly because of what's to come next um, tomorrow with um, the Fed spe speakers and uh, then also the jobs data. So still more data points to come to, you know, uh, verify an actual trend in this movement. But what I want to say is basically that this was a quite unusual day and um, certainly um, not as expected, right? So let's have a look um, a little bit more on fundamentals well maybe let's start here with something i posted in a patreon community today so that's the second week of data for um, the license plate registrations coming in uh, for tesla here at almost thirteen thousand. lee auto three thousand neo um three thousand expon close to two thousand and that's obviously uh, for neo's case here um, not what you would expect, given what I outlined in yesterday's video um, that um, in this uh, media briefing here by uh, Li Hong, um, he basically mentioned, you know, we've now 300,000 cars produced and we're gonna um, actually deliver them up to January 1st. So that doesn't really add up with this weekly license plate da data, to be honest, right? Um, however, um, I try to make sense of it and um, it actually makes sense if you think about what I've reported um, earlier is that um, in the end of November or during the end of November, I think up to eight days at uh, the factory um, F2, so that's where the ET5 is being produced, uh, was closed down because of COVID measures. And um, of course, that is showing up in a lack because uh, cars getting produced at some point or getting not produced in this case, um, need to be delivered and then show up in the license plate, right? So there is a, um, a different um, time lag in between. And so we could act actually expect um, that we really see the bump in NEO deliveries um, coming in the next weeks. Still, I'm not convinced that this may end up till this um, very large data point here outlined by Li Hong. Um, we'll see, um, of course, a big goal and I'll take it if they make it. Anyways, back to some more longer term fundamentals, I would say, which is around battery swapping because there was so much in this speech, actually. Um, and let's just focus for this part on a battery swapping. Um, and the first thing he mentioned is that they have now... Um, yeah, battery swap stations that are unattended and um, that they are frequently ex uh, inspected by specialists from time to time. But um, it's showing that battery swapping stations are getting increasingly autonomous. Um, so they don't need actually somebody uh, in person in front there um, doing the, you know, helping with the battery swapping, um, just somebody from time to time inspecting them. So that could be kind of a mobile service um, going between swap stations, right? And so he mentions unattended is key for further expansion and globalization of these NEO facilities. I would agree with that. That's already quite interesting. But further on, what he's also dropping here is that um, with the NOP plus beta, and I've covered that one in the last video, that this might be something similar to FSD, so Tesla's FSD, um, full self-driving. Um, but 
Yeah, actually it's not because it's rather a NeoPilot on steroids, if you will. So a, a better version of NeoPilot, um, but not yet driving um, driverless um, within the city, for example. However, what he noticed here is um, with this software, there is a new feature um, that won't be found in others um, in other EVs. And that means that NEOS vehicles will be able to navigate um, to battery swap stations by themselves, finish battery replacement and leave automatically. If you think about this, this is mind blowing. This is the next step in towards an autonomous future, uh, future. And this is really where NEO brings two things together. One is battery swapping. Uh, so recharging, replenishing of power. And the second one is actually, um, you know, autonomous driving technology. And um, that's a unique advantage of NEO here um, with those two um, technologies. And it's telling you NEO isn't a te technology company here. Um, and, you know, you know, this is possibly, I mean, quite some years down the road. I can't imagine that this will be, you know, available very soonish. They mention here that this function needs the support of high precision maps and supported routes. So possibly this will be, you know, a, a pretty small area where this is applicable. However, um, still, you know, just thinking of what's ahead of us here, this is quite um, interesting. If you're just thinking use cases, you might be at the office and you can just on the app, um, you know, tell your car to go to the next swap station and get a new battery, come back and park in the in the um, parking slot. And then once you finish your work, you go down and you have a fully charged car. And uh, ultimately, this is where battery swapping plus um, ride hailing autonomous taxi fleets and um, you know these kind of use cases come together and where I think battery swapping becoming also economically very, very interesting also in contrast to uh, supercharging because basically what do battery swap stations do? Well, it's a more automatized, more economical and actually um, even better for the battery way of um, charging um, and replenishing the system here. And so that is possibly what Neo is working on. I think that's quite exciting to read here, um, but I would dial back my expectations whether or not this technology will be available very uh, soon, because this would essentially mean in the first step, possibly, you know, your Neo uh, is uh, taken over. You possibly still have to sit in a car and then uh, you know, driving to the battery swap station by itself and then uh, you know doing everything on its own and um, you don't have to take care of anything. Basically, it frees your time and might be much safer in the end as well. So we'll see if they are able to pull this off maybe in the next step, even without a driver in the car. I don't know. This is the future we're talking about and Neo's right at it. So quite exciting to see. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.